Hey there, Dr. Alan Christensen here with you. I want to talk about thyroid nodules, you know, the full story behind them and what they are and how you can treat them naturally. Would you believe that women in their 40s, 40% of them may have thyroid nodules? Let's talk about where they come from and how you know if you've got them and how you can keep them from becoming cancers. So what are they? Well, quite simply, they're just abnormal lumps of thyroid tissue. The thyroid has this buildup of normal cells called follicles that pull in iodine, that take tyrosine, make thyroglobulin, and utilize thyroid peroxidase to build hormones, these little nest-like follicles of cells. But some parts of that are uneven and not the same texture, and we call those nodules. The main cause for those in the modern world is Hashimoto's thyroiditis. The other causes can be radiation exposure, iodine deficiency, or iodine excess. Iodine deficiency is a problem in the developing world. Iodine excess is more a common culprit behind Hashimoto's in the modern world. So who gets these things? Well, it parallels percent and decade by age quite conveniently. <laughs> Pretty odd thing, but women, their age and their decade is about their percent risk for nodules. So if you're 30, there's about a 30% risk. 40 and 40, 50 and 50, 60 and 60, and 70 and 70. How simple is that? but very prevalent, and overall about three times more common amongst women than men. So are these nodules dangerous? Usually not. 95% or more can be benign. So are there symptoms from them? Usually not. If they're very big because of where your thyroid sits, they can affect swallowing or speaking, or if they're really big, they could affect the nerves that, that allow your tongue to move properly as well, but usually not. And also, if they're really big or in the wrong place, they may cause some pain. That's pretty unusual. How do you know if you've got them? Well, there's really three big methods. There's self-exam, doctor's exam, and ultrasound. And doctor's exams can pick up on nodules maybe 10% of the time, 5 10% of the time. Self-exam, similar, maybe even better if you do it regularly. Ultrasound is the gold standard. So I do encourage all those with thyroid disease to have a screening ultrasound because you could have a substantial, suspicious, unusual nodule and never know it otherwise, completely possible. So what are the steps to do about them if they're big? What other diagnostic steps are done? Well, there's, there's several factors and I can't go into all the details, but if they're well more than one centimeter, if they're calcified, if there's a lot of calcified spots, if they have exaggerated blood vessels, then they may want to be biopsied, and that's because they look suspicious for cancer. If they are biopsied, there are, the other consideration then is removal. So if they've had an abnormal biopsy, that could be a reason for it, or if they're growing very fast, or if there's abnormal lymph nodes nearby, if they're putting pressure on vessels or nerves, if we see high levels of thyroglobulin, those could all be thoughts about justifying removing those nodules or portions of the thyroid. So apart from all that sharp needle scary stuff, what else do we do about this? Well, the two biggest factors are really dialing in your TSH and dialing in your iodine. Now the TSH, there's this broad normal range and there's this narrow optimal range. And many have argued that with nodules, you can go even narrower and it may be about like 0.5 to 0.9. And the concept is that TSH stimulates the thyroid, all things thyroid. And if your thyroid is perfectly healthy, that's great. But it also stimulates nodules. Now think about this like your garden. And if you've got beautiful tomato plants, sure, you could put miracle Grow on that. And hey, I'm sorry, but I'm not a good gardener, so if miracle Grow is not a great thing, please forgive me, but this is just an idea. But if you had weeds in there, and you put miracle Grow on the weeds, they're gonna grow too. So TSH is kind of like miracle Grow for your thyroid. And you don't wanna put that on the nodules, so you want it lower. But too low, there's more harm than there is benefit. That's why we cap that at about 0.5, so you don't want it too low. So what else do we do? Well, you want to reverse insulin resistance. There's quite a bit of data saying that when your body has more of a difficult time managing blood sugar, that's when you're more apt to grow nodules. So other data we have, high amounts of produce in the diet, that cuts the risk of developing nodules and also cuts the risk of nodules growing and can help them reverse. Now, here's a wild thing that's even been shown for cruciferous vegetables. And many have talked about 
cruciferous vegetables as goitrogens. And that's a separate topic. They may or may not be, usually not, but they've been shown to reduce nodules. So have your produce. Please don't be afraid of it. You're better off having more and more types than fewer and fewer types. So check your thyroid, get in the habit of the monthly self-exams, get a doctor's exam, get your ultrasound, and know if you've got nodules. And if you do, take some clear steps as appropriate to manage them, cut the risk of them creating problems for you. Take great care. We'll talk in really soon. Bye-bye.